the first step of our Microsoft 365 maintenance process is going to the Office 365 message center. This is how you stay on top of your Microsoft 365 system overall. We're going to review each section and in those sections we're going to be looking for problems and we determine do we need to make a ticket to do something. What we're going to do is we're going to go over service health, the overall system service health. We're going to look at the major updates. We're going to look for latest unread messages and they come out a lot, several per day that you need to stay on top of. Plan for change notifications, particularly plan for change notifications that have dates associated with them. New features in the system that your users should know about and fix or prevent issues. Let's go ahead and get into the portal now. So all I did was go to portal.office.com and in there I'm clicking on admin and once I do that, that takes me right into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I'm going to scroll down to health and my first stop is I'm going to check service health. Remember when I showed that one slide where I conceptualized what Microsoft 365 would look like if it was a server in your system? I'm going to go back to that slide really quick. So here it is. And I said, well, if I could take Microsoft 365, the tenant, and uh, I could put it on your local area network. And what I would do is I would take this rack enclosure, this blade server rack enclosure, and I would load it up with blade servers. And each server then would be running Azure Active Directory server, Exchange server, SharePoint server, Team server, da 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 da. They'd all be running in here. So now if I go back to the portal, that's what we're looking at right here. This is all of our services. I conceptualized it like it was an enclosure and you had all these blades, but Microsoft's taking care of that. We don't have any hardware to deal with. We don't have to update or upgrade the software, but we do need to see what the status is of the cloud services. So I can see right here, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, they have advisory issues. I would go in here, I would take a look at it, see if it pertains to us and our users and determine if there's anything to act on or notify our staff about. Really this would be some place you would go every single day just checking on overall service health or if you're about to fix an issue for an end user and you wouldn't want to spend a bunch of time working on the issue when there's a degradation in the service. There are service degradations from time to time and you should know about them again so you're not wasting time servicing something that you really can't do anything about right now. So now I'm going to go into the message center which is what this check is really about. Right out of the gate at the very top, we see major updates. So we got some new features. Uh, we've got uh, a notification about Android mobile apps. I'm going to dive into those for a little bit. But you have major updates up here. Below that, you have the new notifications that are in bold. I dropped this down real quick. You can see the plan for change notifications. I could sort straight to that if I wanted to. That's an important one, and I want to spend some extra time on that. Stay informed is mostly about new features, but I'm also going to show you an example where the stay informed notification would impact your users. So you just got to know what's going on. And then prevent or fix issues is about things Microsoft knows about and they're working on and just letting you know in case this particular item is something that affects your tenant. So let me go into an example here. This one right here. I'm going to click on it and it says new feature update outlook for Windows 2016 or later to modern authentication login experience. So this is great. We are having an improvement in the security with Outlook. Everybody's in Outlook all the time. Right here then it says how does this impact me? Users of the Outlook client will begin to see a new modern login prompt rather than the Windows login dialog box. This change is being implemented to improve security of the service and ensure consistency in the sign-in process across products. This change affects the dialog users will see when requesting their credentials and it's showing an example of what the experience will look like. Then below here it says what should I do to prepare for this change? There is nothing you need to do to prepare for this change but may consider updating training and documentation as appropriate. If you wish to disable modern authentication you may do so via PowerShell. A couple things I'll say. This was not a plan for change notification with a date and I'm going to show you that in just a minute but to me my experience is this will definitely impact users. Imagine that. They're used to not having anything prompted to log in or they haven't seen anything in a long time. Now they've got a new login experience and I have a feeling Alex just going to flip on them one day and they're going, what's going on? And they can't get in and it's going to be a Monday morning they're trying to get work done, things like that. It's going to be a bad day for IT. You, as part of your Microsoft 365 maintenance process, were way ahead of this. You saw this coming. You let your users know. If there was any training involved, you kind of tested it out for yourself. If you weren't in here proactively looking at this, how would you even know what's going on. 
Here's another one. And this is a plan for change notification. Action required June 30th, 2019. The Office mobile apps for Android will be ending support for Android 4 and Android 5 on June 30th, 2019. How does this affect me? Bottom line is this potentially will affect users, especially for, for most people watching this video, probably don't have any conditional access policies set up for Android OS or iOS. So the users are downloading Outlook Mobile, Teams Mobile, and they're just using it with whatever operating system they have, however old it is, Microsoft is raising the security level of the system. They're moving you along. They're not going to call you and let you know that you've got to make these changes. You have got to make sure that your users have upgraded Android OS for their mobile apps. It's saying here that your users will continue to be able to connect in the system, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to make the apps start working kind of wonky, maybe weird. And then they're going to be calling, looking for support on this issue, and then tying up IT support for something that the IT could have gotten way ahead of. I'll show you a few other items here too. Here's a new feature, password protected anyone links. So I use anyone links and we do in our company quite a bit. It's, it's really nice. Bottom line is you, instead of sending attachments and trying to keep track of different versions of attachments that are being sent all over the place, you can just send somebody a link and then you can give them access to that link for 30 days and they can pass it around to whoever they need to. We use this for proposals all the time. Well now you can actually add on a, a password, a custom password, just like if you were to, to like a protect a, an Excel spreadsheet. That way it adds a little more security into the system. For us, this would be something I would definitely let our user base know about. Scrolling down a little bit further, Teams read receipts. This is a really nice feature in Teams. We use Teams extensively at Zerillion. And now I can actually request a read receipt when actually somebody has read the message that I've posted to them. This is another thing that I would definitely let our team know about. Let me show you another plan for change notification that potentially, if you weren't in here looking at this, this would disrupt your users. I'm going to click on this one here. A plan for change notification, November 30th, audio conferencing. Bottom line, this is saying that if you are using audio conferencing and you are used to being able to get into a conference call and have the system dial out to grab somebody and pull them in, you'll be able to continue to do that, but you won't have unlimited minutes to do that. You'll get 60 minutes in a month. Beyond that, you're going to have to have communication credits or you're basically purchasing additional minutes so those users can remain on that call. If you weren't in here looking at this and didn't know this was about to happen, what would happen is December 1st, you would just simply have problems. Your users would be in an important meeting and then they would just be disrupted. So we can get way ahead of this. So you've got to keep tabs on this and determine, is this something that's going to impact us? Do I need to make a ticket on it? Is there something I need to reconfigure or change? So bottom line, this is an important stop. It's your first stop. It is an important piece of making sure that your system is stable, that your users have access to the services that they need. And when Microsoft is raising the level of security inside the system, that you're well ahead of these changes so your users are not disrupted. If you want to talk to us about putting Microsoft 365 inside of your company, let's talk. We're a six-time Microsoft Gold Tier 1 Cloud Solution Provider. We sell and service Microsoft Cloud subscriptions, and there's a little note there that we only service clients that we are the subscription reseller. We are a much better experience than an enterprise agreement or working with Microsoft Direct. If you're in an enterprise agreement, imagine this. You're a company with 250 employees, and you have an enterprise agreement, and you are at the very bottom rung with Microsoft. What do you think that experience is going to be like? And also you have to prepay on an annual basis for all your consumption. With a cloud solution provider model like us, you don't pay any extra and it's monthly. Add subscriptions, remove subscriptions, and it's a much better experience. Also, if you're working with Microsoft Direct, you're going to have a much better experience working with us as well. We're going to be able to guide you a lot better than just calling into the first level support with Microsoft. We also have a premier direct technical support relationship that is even higher and we spend substantially on than the general partner support and that's because we are a tier one cloud solution provider. Lastly, if you want us to get you set up and you want to take over the management, fantastic. But also if you want us to do all of the management and supporting your users with an unlimited help desk, unlimited system remediation, end user training, monthly IT management calls, and virtual CIO planning, which is what I do, you can talk to us about that too. That's our confident cloud advantage. So finally, remember this. Microsoft 365 is the most advanced system that Microsoft has ever made, but it does require maintenance. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.